so what I want, what I will uh, speak about today uh, is uh, uh, motivated by the following conjecture, by the part of motivation. Um, so the conjecture is, is the following that um, the classical realization of uh, say Voivodsky motives is conservative. And so uh, by conservative, so let, let me maybe give an example. Uh, so the, the, the main example I'm interested in is uh, the case of the Betty realization. So uh, when, when we have uh, an embedding of, of our base field into the complex number, we have uh, a functor going from uh, Wojewski's motive with, with rational coefficient into the uh, bounded vector spaces. And the conjecture is that this functor is conservative, which means that um, this functor uh, detects isomorphism, which is also equivalent to say that it detects zero objects. So if you have a motive and you know that it's, it has no cohomology, then this motive should be uh, zero. Um, and of course, in, in characteristic zero, wh when our base is, is, is has characteristic zero, then by, by the comparison uh, theorems, we know that it's essentially, it's equivalent or it's, it's enough to somehow to, to treat one of the classical realizations. And um, for instance, I can, I can choose, for example, to, to work with the Durham realization. And this is what I will do because it will be, uh, uh, the link will be more transparent with what, what I will be saying later. So, uh, Another example is to, to take uh, the, the RAM realization, which is which would, would go uh, maybe more naturally would go from uh, motives with rational with coefficient in the, in, the, in the field also in the same field. So, and so, to, so here would be the characteristic of K should be. So it's somehow a bit more canonical because we don't have to choose any any embeddings. Um, and uh, in fact, so to, uh, again, to, to, to make the, the link with what I will be saying later more transparent, I will, um, I, I, I want to formulate or I want to, to give a more precise uh, conjecture. So it will be conjecture, so, um, conjecture prime. And so I, I will first maybe state it and then explain what, what, what are the objects. Uh, so the conjecture prime uh, con would say the following. Um, so there is an isomorphism uh, between, so I'll write it like this and then explain what this means. Um, okay. And what is what are the terms? So uh, this is, this will be, the unit object of, uh, of this category. So, um, and uh, which, which, I, which can also be, which I also can write as Q0, and you just extend the scalars to K, okay. Uh, this guy is uh, a bit complicated to write down, uh, but, I will try. So this is, uh, it's, a, it's a spectrum. So this is spectrum in the sense of topology, except that here we don't take S1 spectrum, but state spectrum. So it, it consists of a family of, uh, of complexes. And the complexes are, uh, are very simple. So maybe there's a shift, but don't worry about this. And uh, so if, if you know a little bit about Wojewski uh, motive, you know that, that the objects are essentially given by some kind of complexes of pre-sheaved on smooth varieties. And this is an example of such an object. So this is the Durham complex. And it's really what it takes a smooth variety X to the global section of the, uh, of the, sh of the sheaf 
of differential. All right? uh, so there's a dot, so it's, it's the RAM complex. Uh, so it's just the pre-sheaf or the sheaf on school variety which gives uh, the RAM complex uh, when you evaluate at x. Okay? So um, the claim is that this conjecture, which, which seems m m more approachable, m much more simple, because it, so it deals only with, with one object, essentially, uh, is actually equivalent, uh, or not equivalent, it, it, it's stronger than, than, the, than the previous conjecture. Um, I just want to spend one minute to tell you uh, how we pass from one to the other. So maybe put this into some remarks. So uh, one should think about this conjecture prime as, as, uh, as some kind of descent uh, along the, the RAM realization. So conjecture prime is saying that uh, there is some kind of a descent. along the Durham realization. So descent in the sense of, for example, faithfully flat descent, but a bit in a derived setting. Um, so wh why does conjecture prime imply the first one? It's, this is very simple. So if you take, uh, if you take uh, an object, in DM geometric. So geometric means that, that, that somehow you, you, you don't consider very big objects, so you just consider compact one, like, like the motive of a algebraic variety, for example. Uh, so if you, if you take such an object, um, then uh, saying that M is zero is equivalent to say that its dual is zero. Right? So M is zero if and only if the internal home from M to Q zero is equal to zero. And then you see that you, now you, you can apply uh, and now the point is that this uh, internal home is some kind of a left adjoint so it, it commutes with the homotopy limit. With homotopy limit. And therefore, uh, you can compute the, the, the internal home with, um, with value in the right-hand side by first computing internal home in, with value in, in omega dot. And we see that, uh, and so, so it's, it followed that uh, this is zero if and only if, so I can continue the equivalence. So uh, m is zero if and only if. Well, here there's some work to, to, to be done, but uh, but essentially, we, we, we get this. And this is uh, exactly saying that the, the Durham realization of M is zero. Okay. So this is why the, the two conjectures are linked. And uh, I should say that uh, I think conjecture prime is much stronger than, than, than this one. Anyway, so, so these, are, these are the motivation. Um, So it's, it's a very strong conjecture, and it, so it implies a lot of things. And for instance, uh, right, so so the, the idea is that um, um, this uh, this object that I I wrote. So it's, it's very complicated. So, it's, it's, uh, so this is this is, is very complicated because some if, if you if you go back to the definition, what what this means? I mean, it, it requires a lot of uh, non non uh, um, non explicit construction. I mean, you, you have to replace everything by vibrant. You have to, to to take vibrant resolution everywhere, and so it's 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 a, it's a really um, uh, a big mess to to, to understand this object. So. Th the idea is to uh, 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 is somehow to consider the problem in a, in a different setting, in a, in different maybe um, uh, different 
back at all. Different setting. Uh, wh where it, it might become somehow easier to, to, to handle. And uh, this setting is, is what I, uh, what, what is the subject of this, of this talk. So, so this, is a, uh, this is an algebra. The omega dot is, a, is an algebra object. And uh, so uh, the, the, the somehow what's interesting here is, is the, uh, the, the face map. And these are really given just by the unit map. The, the very simple, uh, there, are, there are the generacy which are the, the given by the motivation, but we don't care about them for this talk. So we just care about the. So the different setting is, uh, this is what, what, what I will, what will be the subject of the talk, which is uh, foliated, uh, maybe foliated psi. So Uh, so I said it, it, it uh, the amount of limit commute with internal home. Ah. Uh, I mean, the, the point is that, uh, so th there's an application probably, which is, um, <laughs> so if, 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 you know, so if, if, you, if you have this, assume that you have this, and that you know that, that the, the RAM cohomology is zero, then you can compute this term, and you get zero, and then, uh, So uh, I want to, now I, I want to, unfortunately, th 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 there'll be a sequence of definitions, maybe sequence <coughs> definition, and I try not to make it too long. Uh, so I, I want somehow to introduce uh, this framework, which, which I, uh, I want to explain, which is uh, how to call the foliated uh, topology, let's set aside. Uh, so first I want to remind you what is a foliation. So I will be working over a field of characteristic zero. And uh, so a K foliation is a triple, um, which I like to denote like this, X over F. And it consists of uh, so an object X. And, okay, and so uh, the object are as follows. So X is a K scheme which you might want to assume to be reduced, but it's not very important. But not necessarily a finite type, maybe quasi-compact. Uh, omega x over f will be a locally free. A finite rank uh, OX module. And of course, uh, df. Is a k linear derivation. And uh, so I, I will assume some condition on, on, on this triple. There are two conditions, which are rather simple. So uh, the first condition is that uh, the map rho f, which is the one induced from df, so the, the one that goes from the absolute differential, the differential to omega x, is surjective. So this is uh, rho f is the, the one induced by, or the, the, the map induced by. And the second condition is uh, an, integrabil an integrability condition. And it says the following, that the, the following square can be completed. Completed, and so it is uh, the square. Um, Sorry, uh, like this. 
So here you have the usual uh, gram differential goes to the wedge product of x and so of course wedge overall x. So there is a map like this that makes this commute. And in fact, it's easy to see that from this you 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 you, you get also that so that, that exists that this can be extended. it into the RAM complex. Right, so these are the conditions. Uh, of course, you, you, if, if X is smooth and you are over the complex number, then uh, th this will give you a foliation in the usual sense, um, uh, thanks to Frobenius theorem. Right, because to give, your to, to give this uh, Omega x over f uh, would be the same as, as giving a sub bundle of the tangent bundle. So that's, and this would be exactly so, uh, this, the condition that the sub bundle is, is closed under the Lie bracket. Right. It's locally free of finite rank. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, it's not a very important condition, but I, I just put it. Uh, I mean, it's important, but you can define also something more general, of course. X can be non can, can be very complicated. It can be very singular, uh, non-finite type. I still assume that that the, that, that the quotient is, lo is locally of, of finite rank. Locally, a nice quotient. Yeah. So if if if, if the global if, if the total space is smooth. Ah. No. <laughs> no. No. I, I mean. Uh, th there is there is probably something. I mean, um, th th there there is certainly uh, formally uh, this is clear, uh, but uh, a priori that th they cannot be. I think they cannot be um, in general. They cannot be made uh, uh, analytic somehow. They cannot be. I mean, a priori no. Th there is no condition like this. I mean, it, they can be non analytic Yeah. 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 It could be that, that the coefficient of, I mean, wh when you resolve this, this, this differential equation, it, it can be that uh, the radius of convergence is in zero, a priori. And so with this definition, that is this, uh, there is an also the notion of uh, morphism. So a morphism of, uh, of K schemes is a morphism of foliation. Uh, so that I write usually uh, like this. If uh, it's a similar condition as, as this one, so if you can complete this, this square, and the square is what you think is, so this is, is the obvious map, uh, and then you have these two quotients. And so con the condition is that you can complete this. And so w whenever you have uh, a morphism of foliation, you can uh, make the following definition. So we will say that F uh, no, not, no, no, it's, uh, this is a coherent uh, inverse. So F is, is said to be differentially et al. If the induced map that we have from the definition is uh, an isomorphism. Okay. 
let me give you some examples maybe to illustrate a bit of these notions. There are some uh, easy examples which, uh, which are not really interesting. Uh, somehow they, they come just from algebraic geometry. Uh, so th the first example is that when you take x a smooth k variety, then of course uh, you have a foliation which is uh, which I denote by x over k, and this would be given by x and the usual theorem, the usual scalar differential sheaf, and and d, and this is called uh, the coarse foliation. <coughs> and the reason it's called coarse because there's uh, th th there's no interesting leaves. Uh, there's only one leaf uh, in X, uh, which is X itself. Uh, the second example is uh, if you take X any uh, K scheme, and then you can consider uh, X over X, which is given by the triple x0 zero and zero, and this would be called the discrete foliation. And you can combine these two examples as follows. So you take um, morphism from y to x, which is smooth. Then you have uh, the foliation y over x, which is given by the total uh, by y by omega x over f over plus over x and f. and so, so this is somehow why I, I like to denote the foli foliation by x over f because I, I like to think about them as you know, generalization of this kind of object. So these are uh, trivial examples. I, I will give maybe one uh, more interesting example, which maybe motivate, which will motivate the next definition. Uh, you, you can consider the, the following uh, scheme. So just uh, a one minus zero times a one. So this is uh, given by the spectrum of k uh, t t minus one and l and I want to think about l as a log as a, as a logarithm so it's natural somehow to to impose uh, the following relation I want dl to be equal to dt over t so what I, what I mean by this notation is that I I, I modify the the sheaf of differentials by imposing this relation in, in omega and uh, there is of course a map projection uh, to the first factor which goes to, to this one and th uh, and you can consider this as, as, a, as a coarse uh, foliation and it turns out that this map is differentially etal and if, if you think about this situation uh, over the complex number you you, you see uh, immediately that th the leaves uh, in this uh, this foliation are isomorphic to to C and the map, uh, the, the restriction of this projection to one of the leaves is just the universal cover of, uh, of C, C star. So in this way, somehow you, you, you realize the universal cover of C star in a kind of an algebraic uh, manner. And so this will mot motivate the following definition. or at least some of the following definition, not all the invariant, but. So uh, let uh, maybe a family uh, fi um, is a foliated cover. The following conditions are satisfied. So, the uh, first condition is uh, kind of obvious now. It's that uh, the fi are uh, uh, differentially etal. 
And the second condition is that, so it, it's kind of a finiteness condition. Uh, you see, that I, I don't assume for uh, any finiteness condition on DFI. So in order to get something reasonable, it, you should, I mean, this will not be enough. This will not be enough. So the, the only reasonable condition I, I could came up is a bit complicated, so, but I, I, I will give it to you. So it's the following. For every point uh, of x um, that exists uh, uh, s inside x locally close, close and constructible, Um, containing x, and uh, there exists also an index, uh, and also uh, uh, an open subset of the spider product, and such that Uh, v is isomorphic to some affine space. Uh, so I write it like this, where T is the uh, smooth and faithful S is P. So it's, uh, it's a bit complicated, but the idea is not, this, uh, not so complicated. Locally closed and constructible, containing the point X. It does if you are in the Noetherian setting. This is the same question everybody asks me when I write this. So, <laughs> so be, because I, I don't, I'm not assuming X to be Noetherian, this is a non-empty non condition to take constructible. Okay. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Right, so what I'm saying is that um, uh, V can be some kind of an aff in infinite affine space over something which is maybe smooth uh, over S and of course surjective over S. Right, so this, this is the condition. And so, so for instance, this condition would imply that the, that the topos is coherent uh, in the sense that every, f every cover can be refined by a finite family, at least if X is quasi-compact. So maybe I, I want to just to, to give a picture of what, what, is, what is the idea behind this definition. So the picture one should have in mind is as follows. So you, you know um, the etal topology, I mean, when you think about, uh, at least uh, when I think about the etal cover, I have in mind something like this, a picture like this. Uh, something like this and maybe you have to remove uh, the point where where the cover is ramified right so this, this is an etal cover and the foliated cover is something very similar except that uh, you don't have any more just a discrete uh, you don't have discrete point in the fiber but you might have some continuous uh, yeah. so it's uh, something like this so you, ha you have uh, you have a big space here and then you have a foliation on it which might look like this. Okay, and then you, you maybe re remove the remove this line because these here there are singular points, and maybe you can if you want you can remove some other line like this. And this would be a foliated cover. Right. No, I mean, uh, you, you want, you don't, for example, you don't want to take uh, the, uh, X as, as, as I mean, you could take. Right, I mean, it, it could be that, that the ideal defining X is, yeah. X is a closed point, but the ideal con is generated by infinitely many uh, functions. Okay. So you, can, you are not allowed to take X as, as S yeah. in this case. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, This is not, a, there's no picture for this because. <laughs> huh? 
Yeah. So th this is the foliated cover. So this is the foliation. And so the, the, the condition is that you want that at each point here, you have a local homeomorphism between this guy and this guy. So th there's a lo local homeomorphism from the leaf to the, the, to the space uh, below. <coughs> okay? So it's, it's like this. For a tile cover, you, I mean, you can re reformulate the condition. As, I mean, there's a flatness condition, but otherwise you, what you want is that you have a local homeomorphism on the, on the C point if you are over, over, over C, for example. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Uh, yes. No. B, B is, is. I mean, is, it's. It's not. We should not really take it very seriously. It's just a technical condition which, uh, which is which I impose in order to get a, a well-behaved topology. It's really just a technical top, uh, condition. What you want, I mean, you want, of course, the, the family to, to be surjective. This is something you want, and, but you want more. I mean, surjective would not be enough. Really because y you don't assume finiteness condition on, on, on your morphism. Ah, okay. And in fact, there are, there are no reasonable con finiteness condition to put. <coughs> yeah. For every point in the, in, the, in the total space, you take the leaf which packed by this point, and it will induce a local homeomorphism to, to the target. All right, so I want now to uh, discrete sheet. So, um, so before I tell you what is the discrete sheet, I want to make the following observation. So this is uh, maybe this will be the only place where I, I will make a link with, with the motivation I explained at the beginning of the talk. Um, that so uh, one has a Poincaré lemma. Let me explain what I mean by this. So um, maybe let me introduce some notations because uh, I should have done this maybe before. So I will denote by Sn for k f t. This will be the foliated side. So just I, I take uh, all the fo all the foliations and I, with this topology. So this is a Grothendieck site. Uh, so I, I will be interested in pre-sheaf on, on this, uh, on this uh, um, uh, category with, with some uh, discreteness property, right? And um, so I, I first want to motivate this by, by explaining what, the, what, I, what, I'm, what, I wrote, what I wrote here. So let, let me give some notation. Um, I will denote by omega uh, with an f. So this will be the w maybe uh, n. This is a pre-sheaf. on smooth for k, uh, which what you think, so it's, uh, it takes a foliation uh, to the global section of, of, the, sh of the structural sheaf. So this is the analog of uh, uh, what, I, um, what, I, what, I, what I was considering at the beginning of the talk, this uh, omega dot, which was uh, I, I used to, to somehow reformulate the conservation conjecture. Oh, sorry. Yes, there is an end. Thank you. It's a pre sheaf it's very difficult to, sh to show that something is a sheaf in this topology. Huh? 
You can chiefify every, everything you have. You can make it a chief, but uh, then I... Um, all right, so what I wanted to say, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Um, all right, so the, on the other hand, you can consider an, another uh, pre-sheaf, which is uh, derived by O delta, and this will be uh, defined as follows. So uh, the, se the section over x for s is given by the kernel of O x going to And so the claim, uh, so the, the Poincaré lemma is saying the following, it's saying that uh, so this complex or some, uh, this, this guy here is a resolution of, uh, of Odetta, so it's, it's a quasi-isomorphism. So of course it's not a quasi-isomorphism of, of pre-sheaf, it's a quasi-isomorphism of um, after passing, so or if you want, uh, it's, a it's an ST local equivalence. So what 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 it say, what say simply that this complex has no um, locally has uh, its cohomology vanish locally for the polyhedral topology. Okay, and uh, so it means that th this complex, which was somehow uh, uh, I was considering at the beginning, uh, can be replaced without much loss by this uh, single guy, which is a priori much simpler, um, and uh, even more so, uh, even more. You can uh, replace the, the, the uh, these guys. So I'm, I'm a bit simplifying here. It's not things are not so simple. Yeah, this can be replaced by things like that. Okay, but of course, then you have to. I mean, uh, this is not doing much. You have to pay something at the end. So wh what you pay that. I mean, you still you still don't know how to compute the cohomology of, of these guys. So, uh, so the question is the following. Oh, it's it's over k. Yeah. I mean, this is what what you do here also. So. Yeah. But so, so I I can make it now I make some definitions. So let let me first put the notation. So. Uh, denote by pi zero naive of the polynation. So this is just would be the spectrum of O delta. Xs. So what what I'm doing here is so this O delta x f is just um, the ring of function which are constant on the leaves. So I'm looking at at, at function which are constant on the leaves, and uh, I take the spectrum of this. So this somehow looks like uh, some kind of a coarse uh, modelized space of leaves. Right? So this is a version, a uh, very naive version of uh, modelized space of leaves. Right. And I can make a definition. It's a quasi iso so it's it's a local equivalence, so you can apply what whatever functor you want. It's yeah, over characteristic zero field it's yeah, there is no problem. Um so definition. Um uh so uh a pre-sheaf on SM four K is uh discrete. If uh, we give a name, a pre-sheaf A, uh, if uh, the map, so there is always a map from this guy to the nice So, um, should, I, should I have said this? so? This uh, this is a, this is a priori an affine scheme. So just an affine scheme and. Uh, I, uh, if I think about it as a foliation, I will always think about it as a dis discrete foliation, right? So this is a, di a discrete foliation. You can evaluate it at A, and I'm claim uh, so uh, the pre is discrete if uh, you can compute A uh, by just looking at the naive uh, pi zero. 
for example, O delta, O delta tends to n, and uh, or for example, you can take O delta times. And there are many examples of, of such guy. And actually, you, you can tell what are all the examples. Here's an easy fact. Whenever you have uh, B appreciative on um, affine schemes over your base field, uh, you can define uh, appreciative B delta on, uh, on, the, on the smooth foliation side by just claiming that uh, over XS it's just B of phi zero naive uh, so this formula gives you uh, clearly a, a discrete perceive and actually all the discrete perceive are uh, are clearly obtained by this all right so th the question I am and so on yeah so I, but I, sh I have to say uh, I should say the following so uh, what I'm what I really want to understand so uh, what I would like to understand is uh, the following so uh, question, uh, compute the foliated cohomology, let's say, of, of an algebraic variety. So I take a smooth <coughs> variety x uh, over k, uh, think about it as a, as a, um, as a coarse foliation, and <coughs> I want to compute the things like that. So uh, the foliated cohomology with value in, um, in, the, in the discrete sheaf or pre sheaf associated to uh, Something like this, and I should I should really say that this has nothing to do with uh, uh, with this omega dot f. These are completely different things, uh, and this is what I what I would like to understand. All right. So more generally, I one, could, one could ask, what is the foliated cohomology of a of an algebraic variety with value in a discrete sheaf? So this is uh, maybe, and th this this will be the next topic. So. Uh, uh, foliated homotopy type. X is uh, foliated with with the uh, with the with the coarse foliation. I mean, for, if you take a variety over k, it's yeah. always uh, essentially pi zero of of x. So it's uh, k or maybe a finite extension of. of it will be uh, again uh, just a fine extension of k. So uh, usually, I mean, if you, if you have an interesting foliation, it will always be uh, k. Oh, okay. so right? that that yeah. By the um, usually, usually, if you take an interesting foliation, you don't have. Uh, it's it's like it's called an irreducible foliation. So there's, there's you cannot somehow put s some leaves into a sub variety. Yeah, so. Every every leaf is dense. For example, this would be an interesting foliation, and for this, uh, phi zero would be would be trivial. But somehow the point is that what, what happens is that when you try to cover your variety with the foliation, and then you, you are doing some kind of fiber product of foliation over X, then you, you will you would end up uh, getting more and more uh, constant functions. So the phi zero will be bigger and bigger, and so on and so. On. You see, and this is the idea behind this. It's like, it's like for, for Italian topology. If you take an interesting cover of your, of your X, I mean, a priori, it's, it just has one, one sheet, right? But then when you take a church cover, you, you end up getting more and more connected components. It's the same story. So, um, foliated uh, homotopy type. <coughs> Sorry? For I equals zero, it will be K. Uh, no, no, it will be zero. If, if i is bigger than zero, it will be zero. For all delta, it will be k. Yeah. 
I, I mean, I, sh I should say maybe uh, we, we know this. So we, we know some, some so uh, we know some, some examples, like you can say what is the topology of xk with value in O delta, and this is simply the ramp homology. It's, it's, it seems like it seems a direct consequence of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the Poincaré lemma. Yeah, it's, I mean, and it's actually, it's a consequence of it, but except uh, uh, it's really hard to prove. I mean, the, and the reason is because there is this condition B, which is very, um, very ugly, and, and so, so there are technical computations, but this is true. It's, we, we would expect it to be true for any foliation, but I don't know how to prove it for any foliation. Here? Oh, uh, okay. I mean, it, it would be certainly something close to X, but not. Uh, if Y is projective over X? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, uh, it, uh, I, I called it naive for, for, many, for many different reasons. One, one of them is this. <laughs> there is a better one which will somehow would take care of uh, somehow the. Okay, so uh, yeah, I, I was saying this, and, and uh, we also know, for example, if you took, if you take, um, you can take an abelian variety, for example, and put a delta here. You can, you have also a formula for for this. You can take GM and delta. You have a formula. For this. You, you, this is computable whenever you have an algebraic group, a commutative algebraic group uh, with the delta. You can compute. Uh, but uh, otherwise, um, sorry, commutative. Okay. Uh, otherwise, it's, there is no formula for it. But uh, I, I will explain uh, that. That there is something to. Uh, no, uh, by, by compute I mean uh, give a formula. Uh, use uh, a formula uh, depending of um, uh, uh, so in terms of classical environment. Something you know. Uh, uh, so th this is uh, probably not not possible. Uh, but I, I will just give a case where this is possible. Um, so it will be possible generically somehow. So this is what I want to explain. Um, okay, so so the, maybe I should say here. So the, the the question can be answered. Can be answered uh, positively uh, if uh, for uh, for what I call at x bar. So this is uh, the algebraic closure. Of the generic point of x. Okay, so uh, I mean this is not anymore. Of course, it's not an algebraic variety, but it's it's something which is very close to algebraic variety. Uh, okay, so I, I want to explain this, and and so, and this this will somehow will, will lead me to the to the topic of uh, the homotopy type. So I, I make it maybe I make some plate and make a definition. So this construction will work um, for any foliation. It's a general construction. So let x over f be a foliation. Um, so I, I want to associate to this something which uh, is an analogous um, uh, object uh, that in, in for, a for the topology is known as uh, the Artin Maser. Uh, homotopy type, so I want to do something similar in the case of the foliated topology. So uh, it's really the same construction. So you, you I define H T maybe uh, I don't know X or F. So this will be uh, a complicated object, but so what it is, it's uh, a, uh, some kind of a pro object somehow. It's uh, it's given by if you apply. Uh, 
uh, the, this phi zero and naive to uh, to some something, and this something is uh, is the foliated hypercouple. Hypercouple. So it's it's not very important. Just uh, it's it's just an it's it's uh, essentially some kind of a. Um, of a, a simplicial uh, scheme uh, you get from from X, and which somehow uh, yeah remember uh, it's polyhedromorphic type. Um, so this is a general construction. It's I mean it's really uh, maybe due to Artin and Mazur, and uh, and of course also by construction uh, you have the following fact that uh, the foli the foliated cohomology of your foliation with value in any uh, discrete pre sheaf can be computed as just simply the cohomology of uh, this uh, guy with value in. Okay. Right, so this is simply just, uh, I mean it's, it's just uh, a, a simple shell uh, scheme. So this is completely uh, trivial and obvious. Uh, so it, it's, it will be only interesting if you can say something uh, about this this guy. And so, uh, so a theorem. So H T uh, bar X can be described. Uh, maybe up to etal equivalence. I, I want to ext I want to give a uh, more precise statement in the remaining time. So uh, eta is a generic point of x. X is a scheme, a variety over k. You take the generic point and you you pass to, the, to an algebraic closure. Passing to the algebraic closure is not not very important. It's just to, to make the statement more easy to write. Uh, it's just important to, to go to the generic point. X, uh, I mean, w w what I will write here uh, will probably only work for uh, really a coarse uh, foliation. Uh, it might also be true maybe in, more general in a more general setting, but the setting would have to be changed, I think. So I, I will just write et eta bar for this guy. So eta bar will be. Statement is as follows: So, H T eta bar uh, um, split, split, not really, but uh, as a product of uh, eigenvalue Martian spaces. So this is pr probably somehow the, the most um, important uh, claim in, the, in, the, in this theorem, the, the splitting. Um, but so I, I will write, write even a more precise thing, I will write a formula for this guy. So it could be as follow. So um, it will be, uh, so th th there will be the classifying space of the, of the differential Galois group of eta, eta bar. Um, and then there will be a product over uh, the integers, which are bigger than two, of uh, an Eilenberg Maxian space uh, like this, which will depend only on the Durham cohomology of eta bar. And then there will be some uh, non-affine part, 
So if I will write it here. So I will maybe say what is alpha. So you, you have to fix um, uh, a family, a representative family. of uh, simple abelian varieties over k. And I have to assume that k is equal to k bar, which is not very, um, it's, uh, you can do this because uh, anyway, you pass to eta bar. So then you would have some, some kind of a d. Then again, similar product. So this is um, this is the formula for this uh, object. So as I said, this is only it's not really an equality. Is there is a map which is uh, an etal weak equivalent in some sense. Um, so I should have should explain what is the v. Sorry, uh, etal means that that it's uh, so th so that this guy. So this is a this is a kind of a simplicial uh, scheme. It's a simplicial scheme, so it's a product of simplicial schemes, and this is this is uh, I mean by this it's, a, it's a simply a tal hypercover. So it's a tal hyper, essentially, it's, yeah, it's an tal hypercover from here to here. So this is what it means to be a tal Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, this is the Galva differential Galva group. So it it it, con it controls the uh, connection, but it also it has also the and nonlinear part, so there is also it's a, it con also controls the Kolchin extensions. Oh, uh, Kolchin non non Kolchin, sorry. Okay, so uh, just to explain what is V, I first uh, explain the version. So U of, uh, if you put an abelian variety A, and then uh, UA is by definition the universal anti-affine extension. Okay, I mean, this, this looks very much like the pluripotent completion, uh, the relative pluripotent completion of A, but Except that here the kernel would be not really unipotent. There would be a lot of GM and, and, uh, and some other affine part. Uh, so this is not a scheme, not an abelian variety. It's really not, not even a semi-abelian variety. It's really a pro object. And uh, the V of A will be uh, the GM, the, um, the, un uh, the canonical Um, uh, on severity of A, GN torsor over Q of A. Right, so, th so this is uh, what it is. So, um, I mean, particularly, actually, so the splitting is not really correct because uh, when you apply V to something like this, it, it's, it's not anymore a split uh, space. Anyway, so what I want uh, will just end and say that uh, so. Using this, I mean, using this, you can compute completely uh, some anything you want. Like, I mean, anything uh, which is discrete or here. For instance, you can compute these guys. And of course, you get, get a formula, but it's of course very, very, very complicated and very. Anyway. All right. So maybe I should stop here.